mutually deaf, so I'd like to call him deaf for an introduction. Tonight I have the privilege of introducing Jeff Davis up to the stage. He will be speaking about, and he will be speaking from an advanced manual. Yeah, storytelling manual. Storytelling manual. His speech will be from five to seven minutes. Like six, six, to, six to eight. Six to eight minutes. And the title of his speech will be Learning from the Best. Jeff is an advanced speaker, even though he's just recently joined our club. He's been in numerous contests, and hopefully we'll be, we will be hearing from him um, on the next contest, uh, our club contest. I, I am Nothing like putting you on the spot. Well, huh? believe it, it's, it's an interesting situation, but in a nutshell, I'm going to uh, work and sending me to San Diego for this huge conference, and I'm gone that day. Yeah. So I was on the fence, I was like, yeah, do I want to compete this year? And <laughs> I'm not laughing, but I was like, I really was like, nah. and I was like, yeah, why not? Because I do it for fun, I really do. If, you, if you're not having fun with it, don't do it. So I, I joined another club just to, just because it met a different day. So this is still kind of, you know, my home club because it's really close to work and it's a great club, but um, I'll, I'll most likely, you know, if I could make that meeting, I'll most likely be, I would have, been here, but there, I do have thoughts about like, man, you know, that conference, I really wish it was on a different day, but, um, so anyways. Okay. So yes, but no. So yeah, yeah exactly. No, no, but yes. And maybe, maybe you'll, uh, you know, maybe, yeah, maybe. You'll be competing against us. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And maybe we'll, we'll meet at a division level. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, anyways, you guys all know how good Jeff is. Here is Jeff once again, okay, learning from that, the best. Do you want uh, green at six or seven or eight? eight? Um, eight I, would, eight? I would actually do, yeah, do, yeah, do green at, at seven, yellow at eight, and red at eight and a half would be great. Thank you for asking, I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> something that we've all experienced from one point or another, or from one time to another in our lives. But let me tell you, I myself am the king of self-doubt. I've definitely had my fair share of doubts in my life, anxieties, worries, all that jazz that we know oh so well. But I want to share with you a story today, a personal story out of this advanced communicator manual, storytelling, that helped me completely transform the way I view my own doubts and how I was able to move forward, but I share it with the goal and purpose of helping you in your life. So if I share something, keep in mind that I'm gearing it towards you. How can this idea or strategy or thought or advice I share help you? First thing that comes to mind when I'm talking about this evolution I'm talking about, this transformation, is my aunt, my dad's sister. She's a wonderful woman, just very kind, a lot like people in here, it's just genuine. I like coming to these meetings because you guys are, are easy to talk to, and that reminds me of my aunt. This is going back now, about eight years, I was a freshman in college, and I heard my fair share of setbacks in high school, but I was able to bounce back a little bit in college. Now, can, can you think of a time, and you don't have to share this one anymore, just in the, in the presence of your own mind, the quiet of your own heart. Can you think of a time where you went through a setback, or, or, or maybe not even necessarily a setback, but a time when you had doubt or you felt like you, you were ready to move forward, you were on the precipice, but you just weren't quite sure how to do it. Just think of something like that in your mind. Keep that in mind because I want you to relate to what I'm saying so that what I share, what I learned from my aunt can help you. I was actually selling Cutco knives, believe it or not, as a sales representative for Vector Marketing and it was great to build my confidence and my aunt would always tell me, she goes, I don't mean this to sound corny, but I really feel like Jeffrey, she would always call me my full name, she goes, I really feel like Jeffrey. When you first came to my house with those Cutco knives, that's when our relationship really kicked off. And that was my freshman year of college. Again, bouncing back from some of those setbacks that I had in high school. 
that weren't the end of the world, but were definitely tough enough to give me the, the power and ability to share with you. Now, my point here is that as I got to know my aunt, as I talked to her more, she just gave me wonderful advice. When I say wonderful, that's the understatement of the century. I really want to convey, like, just incredibly relevant, insightful, and heartfelt about like she spoke from the heart. She didn't have to necessarily plan what she was saying, because when she spoke to me, she just really cared. She genuinely cared. And she listened to me share some of my concerns, and she really was the best. I called this speech Learning from the Best for a reason, because when I spoke to her, I was learning from the best. And she was really the first person to ever believe in me in my entire life, especially after having these massive, weird, just unexpected setbacks my senior year of high school that I literally would not wish on my worst enemy. And I have good parents, of course. I'm very blessed. I have, I have a you know, great father, a great mother. I have good siblings. I don't have a ton of friends, but I have a couple close friends who believe me. So it's not like I'm saying, oh, the world is against me. I'm definitely not saying that. People are, are fine. But Meg, my aunt, is the first person who ever really not only listened to me, not only gave me advice, but I could see it in her eyes and her, her vocal tone and, and her, almost like her body language, like she really believed in me. And it's great that I had that at that time because freshman year of college, I was still improving, but I was also still struggling a little bit. Now that's why I mentioned doubt in the beginning of the speech. I, I was wavering back and forth. And that's why I wanted to ask you about that time when you said if you ever had a doubt or a setback or a time where you were kind of on the precipice because I found myself that freshman year of college wavering back and forth between, oh, I'm building this confidence, but I, I, I really was kind of losing some of my ground when I would go back to those old doubts. And again, my aunt helped me work through that. I really felt like I was learning from the best. I'm not saying that as an as an overstatement or as an exaggeration. I mean, she genuinely was the best in the way that she approached life, and she was a model for our entire family. Can you think of anyone that you admire, respect, love as much as I love my Aunt Meg? She would hold parties sometimes. And it's funny because, yeah, parties are normal, but my family, and, and this isn't anyone's fault or anything, it's not a bad thing. We don't hold a lot of huge parties just because people live in disparate places. And again, we're, we were fine, we all get along, parties don't happen often. But Meg was able to throw those parties. And at the end, when we would sat down, at the end of the party, people were filtering out, we'd sit outside and she would share with me books she's read and insights she's come across. And it was pretty cool because I remember when, that, when we were gazing in conversation at the end of this party, and as I th think of it now, I remember now and share it with you, she would tell me, Jeffrey, you, you don't have to be defined by your past. And, and I know that sounds so simple, and, and now I can say it like, wow, that, that's probably even common sense. Absolutely. But remember what I said about that doubt that I had that was really hurting me badly after going through things where I had conflicts with close friends, and I had people in high school who told me some cruel things as, as not, nothing against them, but as people in high school can be. And she said, you don't have to be defined by your past. <clears throat> and that really helped me a lot. That helped me take off in terms of, when I say take off, I mean in terms of focusing my energy on, on reading books, on learning, um, listening to other people on YouTube videos, going to talks whenever I could, either through my school, McDaniel College, or even in the community, Westminster, Maryland, who can I listen to? She really transformed my life. I've never really had someone, again, who believed in me to the extent that she would just always be there for me. And I mean that in the most genuine way, and I, I hope you have someone like my Aunt Meg. And she truly was infinite, because she was not only one of my best friends, she was one of my siblings' best friends, and she was the closest person to many people in my family, for example, my parents, and I mean that again in a very genuine way. Now, the following is, is difficult to share, because <laughs> I did love Meg so much, but she was in her very early 50s, and she was battling with cancer for a very long time, I mean, really pushing, she, told me, Jeffrey, I, I don't want to die. My son is in early high school. And it was 
it's been very tough for me in the in the recent history of, of this year and at the end of last year in December because I've never really had someone that close to me pass away and, and she's now gone. And coming here tonight, I, I was nervous to share that because I'm not one to get overly emotional and I'm, I'm not trying to say something that is out of context of the speech with doubt and pushing forward, but I wanted to share with you that because the last conversation I ever had with her completely changed my life forever. And she, she was in tears and she said, Jeffrey, this is a, a, a really serious situation. I really don't want to die. And I could hear her stomach growling and the ovarian cancer was eating at her. And she just reminded me and she, she told me, your, your transformation has been incredible. And I say that not about Jeff, but about to the value of her listening skills and her caring. And I even told her, I said, I went to Kuala Lumpur to do some speaking. I said, I've done a little bit of speaking locally in, in different schools. I've, I've even spoke to a nonprofit. I've been getting out there a little bit more. And she said, your life path is exciting. I'm so excited to watch this. And let me tell you, Meg is the person who helped me do that. So I share this to help you. As you continue your own evolution and your own life, What's something you can do to just move forward a little bit? Take Meg's advice, as I did, learning from the best, that you don't have to be defined by your past, that you do have a life purpose, and, and age doesn't matter. You could be seven years old, you could be 70. You could be 15, or you could be 62. Age does not matter. Every person has a purpose in this moment, and the next moment, and every moment you're here on the planet. And I, I very much encourage you to implement Meg's advice, because I've been hurt by my fair share of people, and I am so blessed and lucky to have so much to have going for me, and I'm the first to acknowledge that. But I've also been through some setbacks that maybe people haven't experienced too. Meg believed me, she picked me up, and she said, don't be defined by your past, and move forward, and you have gifts, and keep on putting yourself out there. Just keep on doing it over and over again. And she would tell me, especially in that last conversation we ever had, it doesn't matter if people reject you or people judge you, because you could have 50 million people do that. But if you help one person, your efforts were definitely worth it. And it's, it's funny how we all have that intuitive feeling, but when I, when I left her, her house for the last time when she, when she hugged goodbye, I just, I just knew it. that was going to be the last time I ever would ever see her. I, I something, it, it was an intuitive feeling. I don't know how, but I... I knew that was it, and she, she didn't want to go. Her, her son is a sophomore in high school, and she held our family together. So it was, it was tough for all of us. But I wanted, even though I was nervous about sharing it, because I'm not typically one to share something like that, I wanted to share her words of wisdom because she was so powerful and so honest and a success, and she helped her child who used to be autistic, who's no longer autistic, and the pillar that her soul rests on, the light, is her ability to believe in people. I was lost, I was broken, I'll even say it, I was depressed. But my Aunt Meg actually cared. Find your purpose, find your own meaning, and if you ever get the chance to believe in someone in your life, a friend, a family, a coworker, a colleague, even a stranger, do it. Be like my Aunt Meg, learn from the best, and I promise you, you will then reach your own version of success your own mountaintop. Mountaintop's not nice. so Let's take a minute and give Jeff some feedback, and then we'll bring up Cecily for her evaluation of our hand speech. And then we'll do some table topics and 